Welcome to lecture 14 of ECE 4305 Software Defined Radio Systems and Analysis. In this lecture, we will look at an alternative implementation for a receiver decision making structure called the match filter receiver realization. Okay. So, the basic problem uh, that the receiver is attempting to um, solve is trying to figure out what sort of signal waveform is being intercepted and deciding uh, is it S1, S2, um, S3, SM um, in the presence of some sort of corrupting signal uh, called noise that's added to the transmitted signal and, and thus kind of like uh, covering up or obfuscating uh, what the uh, true identity of that intercepted signal is. So what we want to do is um, if we have some sort of like time domain signal pulse, or like a G of T, and we add some noise to it, W of T, we get the following um, received signal X of T at, uh, that's intercepted uh, across some time period, uh, zero to T. Now, what happens is, is that this signal G of T may represent, well, let's say for now, some binary representation, either a one or a zero in the digital communication system. Um, and that the noise uh, that is contributed to it um, is essentially a white noise process with zero mean and a power spectral density of n naught over two that's added. So, so what we want to know is, um, given that the receiver knows a priori, what are the two possible signal waveforms that can be transmitted by the transmitter? Uh, can it make a decision? Uh, based on what, a, what it observes uh, when it in intercepts a signal, uh, which signal was transmitted even with noise present. So in order to devise an approach for detecting G of T when it's uh, immersed in a W of T, uh, the noise signal, what we need to do is we need some way of um, extracting out or figuring out uh, what G of T is present in the X of T signal. So um, using that term, like extracting out, what we want to use is some sort of filtering operation that can pull out, uh, extract uh, the G of T from the X of T, even with W of T present. Okay? And if we can somehow filter or clean up that signal, intercepted signal, maybe we'll have a better shot of figuring out what G of T it is. All right? So what we want to do, and remember, um, as a communications engineer, you pretty much have no power of the design of what sort of transmit waveforms are being um, communicated by the transmitter, and you absolutely have no way of controlling um, the noise being introduced by the environment, but you have total control over the receiver implementation. So what you want to do is you want to design some filter H of T that can enhance G of T while mitigating W of T. All right? And so we designed this filter, H of T, and the outcome of H of T will be y of t from x of t, and, uh, and, and we'll have an enhanced version of g of t, which we'll call g naught of t, and some post-processed noise. So it's no longer w of t, but n of t. So what we want to do is we want to design an h of t that makes g naught of t like um, as uh, sort of obvious as possible as to what was transmitted um, given that, uh, that noise is present. So we want to sort of create like, you know, uh, we want to, as much as possible, distinguish the signal even when noise is embedded in the transmission. So there's something called the peak pulse SNR. And so what the peak pulse SNR is, um, uh, is defined by equation two over here. So equation two um, is, we have the following. So we have nu is equal to the magnitude squared of this g naught uh, of t waveform, okay, at, at time instant big T. So we're looking at one very specific time instant, and we're taking the magnitude squared of that time instant, okay? And so that's at the end of the filtering operation across the zero to t time duration, okay? Because what happens afterwards is essentially um, after um, uh, that waveform has completely transmitted, we have to reset the filtering operation for the next signal waveform to be um, uh, properly uh, processed. The denominator, on the other hand, what we have here is 
the expectation of the square of the noise. This is some sort of mean squared uh, average of the noise. So we have the average noise power essentially in the denominator and we have uh, the signal power um, um, at, the, uh, at the instant time equals t, uh, big T in this case, okay? So that's the instantaneous power of that uh, g, g naught signal. Now, um, in order to maximize this guy, uh, what do we do? So again, I told you that you cannot change g of t to waveform. You cannot obviously change the noise unless you have some sort of like um, um, supernatural power that can influence the environment. The only thing that we can change here is h of t. And we're going to do that in order to maximize this equation number two. So let's design h of t. So let's look at g naught of t magnitude squared. And we know, okay, so this is the beauty of working in the frequency domain. So remember, filtering is a convolution operation. So it can be kind of painful if, if the math is intractable. On the other hand, what is convolution in the frequency domain? It's multiplication of the frequency responses. So what we do is this magnitude squared of g naught of t is equal to um, the multiplication of the frequency response of h of t, which is h of f, with the frequency response of g of t, which is g of f, and then we take the inverse Fourier transform, which is this integral from minus infinity to infinity, um, h of f, g of f, which is the convolution of those two in the time domain, e to the j 2 pi f t df, and then magnitude squared. And so what happens is if we do that, and we also know that the noise, n of t, uh, what is the power spectral density? We know that the omega, uh, the w of t has a power spectral density of n naught over 2. Ah, but remember through EWK, einstein wiener kinchin theorem, that the power spectral density of n of t is going to be the filtered version of the input power spectral density. In fact, it's going to be n naught over 2, which is the input power spectral density, multiplied by the magnitude squared of the frequency response of the filter itself, h of f. Whew. So, given all of this, what happens is we now take this new expression, like we're going to try and find a closed form expression for new, the peak uh, signal to noise ratio. And we replace those parameters with these expressions. And so now we have this complicated expression here on in equation four. And, we, and, and so we're now saying, okay, now what? So we have a denominator. It's an integral of, um, of the frequency response of the filter squared. And we have the numerator and it's uh, the inverse Fourier transform of the, um, of the convolution between h of t and g of t. What we need to do is somehow separate h of f and g of f and isolate for g of f. So how do we do this? We use something called Schwartz's inequality in order to get a closed form solution for this uh, signal noise ratio metric. So let's let's uh, in case you don't remember what Cauchy Schwartz is uh, sorry what Schwartz's inequality is um, here's a, a sort of a basic definition. So if you have two complex functions phi one of x and phi two of x and they have integral representations here and they're both bounded they're less than infinity in both cases then their product magnitude squared this integral will be less than or equal to the product of the individual integral expressions that we have here. And this becomes equality when phi 1 of x is equal to k, some constant multiplied by phi 2 conjugate, complex conjugate of x. So if we use that in that previous expression for the numerator, we can actually decompose it, this big uh, integral expression, to two, the product of two integral expressions. And then let's suppose we want to have equality. We let we, we, we let um, uh, essentially h of f equal, or the, the optimal h of f, in order to get this equality, equal to a constant multiplied by g f complex conjugate e to the minus j 2 pi f t. And that, folks, if we take the inverse Fourier transform of that, gives us what the time domain representation of h of t, the optimal h of t, uh, h opt of t, is equal to. It turns out 
that this is nothing more than the time flipped version and shifted version of the transmitted pulse G of T multiplied by a constant K. This is fantastic. So this is why we call it match filtering because match filtering, we take some, some signal that's embedded in noise and filter it with the pulse that's contained in that noisy intercepted signal, we convolve it with itself. And what that's going to do is that will create a huge peak way above the noise. And that's where we're going to sample at, at time instant big T. And that's going to maximize the signal to noise ratio at that instant relative to the noise. So this process of match filtering is SNR maximizing. And the filter itself is wonderful because we can implement it using a tap delay line. So this is fantastic. So, so let's, let's do a quick example. Suppose I have an H of T. Um, uh, I want to create an H of T that matches with a G of T. And so, um, uh, you know, what's the solution? How do we make a match filter receiver realization uh, given two possible pulses, which I'm going to draw right now? Okay, so suppose G of T looks like this. So here's G of T, it looks like a rectangular wave from zero to T. It has energy, energy, that is equal to A squared T because it has an amplitude A. All right, now, um, what would be our H optimal for this? So we would do is we would flip it around the y-axis and shift it by t. Sorry, that's t, that's time. So h optimal will look like, oh, lo and behold, it almost looks like the exact same thing. Now, when we filter, when we receive our signal x and feed it into h optimal of t, and we produce the output y of t, what does g naught of t look like? It will look like the following. g naught of t is going to look like a triangular pulse. Why is that? Because what happens is what happens when you convolve two rectangular waves together? You get a triangular pulse that's twice the width. Now remember, um, for our peak signal to noise ratio nu, we care about the value of G naught of T at big T. That is that value. And that's the largest possible value. So imagine if you had noise superimposed on that, this peak would stick out and that would maximize our signal to noise ratio. So given this example, in terms of, um, of like, uh, you know, sort of match filtering against a specific waveform, how do we generalize this to a receiver structure that has multiple waveforms to choose from and we need to decide on which one's been transmitted and intercepted at a receiver in the presence of noise. And so we're going to draw now um, how this realization will look like using match filtering. So how would we re uh, realize a match filter implementation of the receiver? It's almost like the correlator base approach. We would have, let's say your incoming waveform, right, R of T and feed it down one of four, four possible paths or n possible paths. Depends on how many unique waveforms that you have to choose from. You then have, let's say, h optimal one of t, h optimal two of t, h optimal three of t, and last but not least, h optimal four of t. So each one of these match filters is tailored to one of the four possible signal waveforms that R of T can be with that noise signal present. And then almost the same thing as the correlator realization. You sample this guy because this is SNR maximizing. You sample at T equals KT, so integer time instances, and then 
you subtract off again any sort of bias, DC bias. So let's do that. So that will be E1 divided by 2. This is going to be E2 divided by 2, E3 divided by 2, E4 divided by 2. And then just as before, at time instant t, for every t, you choose who has the highest peak at every sampling instant. So choose max. And that is how your receiver decides on what has been sent.